If you're like I was a couple months ago, you're looking for a twin size bed that you can make yourself, it looks good, and it doesn't take a thousand tools to make it. Well, you came to the right video. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I made this DIY twin size bed. Let's check it out. Welcome to Made by Mitch, where I show you the things I make and what I learn making them. I want to thank Tufts and Needle for sponsoring this video, and I also wanted to mention that I have detailed plans available. Link is in the description below. Now let's get started with the project. So the first thing I had to do was cut everything to the correct length. I started with making the front and back legs, and then I would move on to other parts of the bed. Now I did want to mention that I use all 1x3 for these parts and I'm gluing them together to make a thicker version of that. Uh, if you don't want to do this then you can use 2x3s but this is just what I did. I use the miter saw for most of my cuts but you can just as easily use the circular saw as you see me doing right here. The next thing I had to do was glue all of the pieces together for the legs. Again, I'm, I'm thickening up, um, making these each too thick, just to make it a little bit more um, aesthetically pleasing uh, and, and hold a little bit more weight and things like that as well. After gluing, I added as many clamps as I had to hold these together and get the best bond I could. I know sometimes clamps freak people out, but it's not that hard to clamp a board and glue them together. It actually makes um, them a lot stronger and you can do a lot more when you have some clamps. Check on Harbor Freight's website or Amazon for that matter. You can get clamps pretty cheap on some of those places. After doing this for the front legs, I did the same exact thing for the back legs. Just got the front and back legs glued up. One tip I wanted to mention to you is whenever you cut these to length, make sure you cut them a little bit long so that way if the glue up isn't perfect, you can trim them to size. I cut my legs to the exact size, so I'm gonna have to trim it and it's gonna end up being a little shorter than anticipated. But just wanted to make that note to you if you're making these legs, start a little bit long. So I'm having a little bit of trouble with this glue buildup on the board, so the best thing to do in this scenario is just to use a wet washcloth when you do the glue up and get all the glue off that you can while the glue is still wet. That way you don't have to deal with this, um, trying to get this glue off and then damaging the wood and that kind of thing. I'm gonna spend some time getting this off and then try to sand it off, but it would have been a lot easier had I not done it uh, like this. Just wanna let you know that. Next I can use the miter saw and cut these legs to the final length. Again, you can do this with a circular saw. You may have to do multiple passes, but it, it can be done. And then after that, I gave everything a final sanding. Um, one thing I'm doing here is chamfering the edges so that way they are not sharp and no one will get hurt on them. And then I can start moving on to the side pieces. So for the side pieces, I used a 1x6 and a 1x3, and I glued the 1x3 on the 1x6. That would become the lip that the bed slats would rest on. And so all I did was cut them to length, add glue here, and then I could clamp them together just like I did in the previous things. One thing you want to do is keep the bottom edge flush and then wipe up your glue and then set that aside and let it dry. And while the side pieces are drying, I could start on the headboard. And what I did for the headboard was exactly the same thing I did for the legs. I'm gluing two pieces together. I'm just making four of these and making them all the same length. While I'm prepping these boards, I wanted to take a second and talk about the sponsor for this video, Tuft and Needle. My wife and I have slept on a Tuft and Needle mattress for almost three years now, and it's been the best mattress we've ever had. In fact, 95% of Tuft and Needle customers love their mattress, and the reason is the proprietary foam that pulls your body heat away while remaining cozy and comfy. Not to mention, it's a lot of fun to see this thing unroll and get set up. So thank you, Tuft and Needle, for sponsoring this. For more information, visit TN.com. Let's get back to the project. After getting all the boards cut and then glued up, I can put them in the clamps until they dry. I think I let them dry overnight and then pull them out of the clamps and then I can cut them to their final size. And after doing this, I use the random orbit sander just to get them sanded up to 120 grit. I also pulled the side pieces out of the clamps and sanded them as well. Okay, I've got everything sanded and ready to go. Now it's time to start assembling the bed together. 
Uh, I'm using a couple different fastening methods to do this, and I'll show you what those are now. So I'm using these flathead bolts for the entire bed, uh, but on some parts of the bed I'm using these insert nuts, if you can see those, and then on other parts of the bed I'm using these cross dowel nuts. I'm also using these quarter inch dowels to, to kind of fasten other parts of the bed. I'll show you all the different parts and what I use to fasten each part. What I did was use this template that I made out of cardboard to give me the exact measurements of where they needed to go. So I'll show you that now. So making a template was pretty easy to do. I used a piece of cardboard, that way it would last a little bit longer than just normal paper would. I just put my board down, traced around it, and then I made some marks where I wanted the holes to be. Now you can make yours wherever you want it to be, but I made the center of my hole 5 8 from the top and 5 8 from the bottom of each piece. After making my template, I can lay out the boards and start marking where I would drill the holes. The first step here is just to make the two legs attached to the top part of the headboard, like pictured here. This is the top board and for it I'm drilling two holes. The top one is for the insert nut that I'm drilling in right here and the second one I'm drilling out for a dowel. Now make sure before you drill these you have the right size you need these to be. And then this is on the opposite board, that's one of the legs, and in that I'm going in to the sides. And for this one, I'm doing two holes that are the same size. One, I'm going all the, not all the way through, this is for the dowel, and then the second one, I'm going clear through the board because that's where the bolt will go clear through. I am countersinking these bolts about an eighth of an inch. So to do this, I had a little bit of trouble keeping that lined up because I had already drilled the hole, but I just shoved a dowel in the hole, and then I tried to countersink with this other Forstner bit and it worked out perfectly. And then I could test fit it out to see if it worked. It didn't quite fit exactly, so I had to go in and drill out where that dowel was a little bit more and then after that I got it to be a perfect fit. Now this looks easy when you're just seeing it like this, but it did take a little bit of trial and error, doing some test boards and things like that to make sure it would all work out. And then I re repeated this same process for the opposite side. Uh, I drilled the two holes I countersunk for the bolt right here and then I could assemble this part together and this is kind of what it looked like when that part was over with. Next I can move on to adding the additional cross braces to the headboard. So the first thing I did was laid all of the pieces out and I had to measure where they would all fit. I didn't really have a plan on where they would go going into this, I, I just measured them out and they ended up being three and a half inches apart. Next I used the template to mark where all the holes needed to be drilled and then I went through and I drilled all the holes for these cross braces. Now for these I'm just using dowels, I'm not using any kind of hardware, so I put a piece of blue painter's tape on the drill bit so that I wouldn't drive the bit in too deep. Then I could mark the other side using the template and then drill that side as well. After marking out the headboard cross braces, I can do the bottom 1x6 that would attach to the other 1x6s on the bed. You'll see that here later on. And I did the same thing as I did in the top of the bed. I used a bolt, went clear through, and then I would countersink that bit. And then on the 1x6, I'm using an insert nut in both places. So I just drilled that out and then I um, drilled in the insert nut. And then I could assemble the headboard. Again, this took a lot of trial and error. One thing I did learn in this is that the dowels don't fit perfect. So I had to go in and use the quarter inch bit to make the holes a little bit larger to fit all of the dowels in. I would say it's probably because my template wasn't perfect, but it did work out in the long run. Just keep trying. Next, I can move on to the leg part of the bed. And I just did the exact same thing as I did for the headboard. I just did the two holes and then the nuts. So I'm not gonna go into detail with that. It's literally the same exact thing. And so next it was time to attach the sideboards onto the headboard. And this was probably one of the most challenging parts of the build. It wasn't extremely hard, uh, but it was a little bit tough. So the first thing I had to do was mark out on both the sides and on the headboard where it needed to attach. And I just used my template, then I could drill the holes. 
To attach the sides, I'm using the cross dowel nuts instead of the insert nuts. And so for these, I had to first drill a hole where the bolt would go through into the side using a quarter inch bit. And then I went in with a half inch bit and drilled in perpendicular to the first hole. I know it sounds a little bit confusing, but because of this, I had to make sure that everything was lined up perfectly so that it would fit in the right way. I'll show you what this looks like on the final assembly. So after I got the holes drilled, the cross dowel nuts all working, I put everything together and then I gave everything one final sanding all the way up to 220 grit and then it was time to add the finish. I chose the polycrylic because it's a water based and it dries really quickly. Uh, I use it a lot on my channel so it's, it's something that I, I just really have come to like. And then I took everything apart and then I could take it to the house for final assembly. To do this, I just did the same thing as I did before. I found that it was easier to hold these cross dial nuts in with a screwdriver while someone else drilled. And this kind of is a close up more of what that looks like. You put the cross dial nut in the hole and then you drill it in and it just kind of sucks um, the, the wood together and it really creates a really tight fit and um, so I definitely recommend doing this if you can get it to fit the right way and after assembling everything together I could go back down and, and cut all of the cross braces for the bed and then I put those in place and then um, I could add the mattress What do you think, buddy? Cool. Look at it. Why did you get on it? Oh, it's so cozy. Does it bounce? Well, I think it's safe to say that he really likes his new bed, and I really like this bed too. It's actually my favorite project I've ever made. I love the way it's constructed. It's really solid, and it was fairly simple to do, and it challenged me in a few ways as well, which is always good. If you like this video, you may like some of the other videos I have on my channel. Click the links right here to take you to those. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.